You are listening to Level Up Gaming Podcast, episode 119, an introduction to Josh, Lori, and Ken. In today's episode, I introduce other co-hosts that will be joining me in future episodes. Today, I introduce the player, Lori, and GMs Josh and Ken. They share their gaming experience and a little bit about themselves. If you'd like to participate in the discussion or leave us feedback, you can contact us at levelupyourgamingpodcast at gmail.com or find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash levelupyourgaming. If you like the content and want to hear more of the show, subscribe and we'll ensure you don't miss an episode. New episodes come out almost every Wednesday. Also, please review, tell a friend about the podcast, or share with your gaming group. Now sit back and enjoy the episode. Welcome into the Level Up Your Gaming Podcast. My name is Aaron, and I'm joined today by three of my friends. I've been promising you that they'd be joining me for weeks. Josh, Lori, and Ken. How y'all doing today? Doing good. Not bad. Rather well. All right. Uh, so anyways, I know that Josh and Ken, you have both GM'd, and Lori, you're mainly a player, and so I brought you into the podcast to try to get your perspectives um, on different topics, and we're all here today, so I thought, hey, let's get you all introduced today, and we'll do a big uh, you know, topic with everyone as well. So um, how about you go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself? We'll start with Josh, because you're on my left. So, Well, then uh, let's... I think I first started gaming back in high school. Um, it may even start earlier than that. I think my parents got me uh, Heroes Quest, the old classic board game. I think that's what we all played together. Oh, God, it's it's the best. The Broad Sewed. <laughs> <laughs> um, and actually, if you look behind you there on the uh, the uh, game. Oh, there it is right it, there. That is the exact one that I got for Christmas back in. You love it. But so, so I get- somewhere in the 80s, I have to assume. Um, and I used to, you know, uh, bully my family into playing it. And uh, they hated it. They absolutely did. Because it's it's a dumb game. It has you know really simple rules, but uh, I really enjoyed doing uh, more complicated stories in high school under actually Jared's brother. Uh, oh yeah, no. Uh, Jason, Jason was an avid gamer. He had a big group with him. I actually mm-hmm. ran into Ken long before I knew mm-hmm. Ken. Yep. Uh, <laughs> as a friend, I would say that you probably came in as an adversary in that context. Yeah, and. We can get into that later. That was, uh, <laughs> that, was, that, was, that, was that was an interesting one, right yeah. there. But, but I've I've told some stories over the years. Um, I've made up some of my own systems, uh, some of my own stories. Uh, I've done out of the book. I've done, you know, completely custom. I've got a long term uh, story that I've been working with uh, my friends with for a while, and uh, another group that we trade off on who's the DM. And right now I'm not, which is quite a bit of fun, actually. It's always nice not to be in charge of the entire world. I think that's every GM's wish is to be a, a player at some point in their time, but most of the time you can't get that from your yeah, table. Absolutely. So. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's where I'm coming from. That's excellent. And Lori. Lori, how would you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. It's Dr. Lori. Oh, Dr. Lori. It's Dr. Larry to you. It is Dr. Dr. Larry to all of you. <laughs> I'm relatively new uh, to playing role-playing games, although when I was in high school, I did have a brief stint with uh, Vampire the Masquerade, where we'd, we would live-action role-play. I think the kids call that LARPing. Um, but really, I just got into it because Josh bullied me into playing one day, and here I am. This LARPing, was, was that at the uh, Naperville Riverwalk? It sure was. Okay. Just was it the actual LARP where you're throwing chops and stuff? I really don't remember, but I mean, people got into it. I was a casual player, really just there to hang out. I was part of one of the uh, the LARPs. I think there was in the uh, how I don't remember the park is over in like Lyle or Lalesha. something. Yeah, Lalesha. Yeah. That's Lombard. Yeah, yeah Lombard. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I, I remember that one. Jared was part of that as well. Yep. And then. Uh, you know, we actually had somebody who had written into the podcast a while ago, uh, who did does the LARP in uh, Milwaukee, mm-hmm. and so Jared had like some crossover with him. Like, oh man, I must have like run into you sometime <laughs> during yeah, that. Absolutely. So it was just very interesting. So I was wondering, oh, what a, uh, want to know a little bit more about the LARP? If you hear anything in the background, that's a that's a dog uh, being a, violently ill. Apparently, no, she's coughing, <laughs> giving us a little coughs. Uh, anyways, we're gonna go. <laughs> 
Um, let yeah. it out real quick. We can, uh, we'll be right back. We can fix this in post, <laughs> right? <laughs> so did you ever play at the Riverwalk? I never played at the Riverwalk. No. Uh, the the yeah. Lilatia Park one moved to uh, College of DuPage. Yeah. Which is funny because actually Lilatia is uh, a splinter faction from the Riverwalk that oh. got spoken to a few too many times by the local authorities in Naperville. Oh, really? And like, so they actually had to move. Who? I no. couldn't give you names. No names. I, I barely... No, not because I can't. I, I don't, don't remember. But no, For yeah. For reasons, Same. I cannot provide you with their names. Hmm. I remember Casey. I remember Tony. Lady? No. Uh, no. Older guys. Guys. Yeah. Oh, it's, um, it's almost always the guys that are causing the trouble. Well, no. It was their player base, but they were the ones that organized the entire thing, took it to Lilatia, and kind of went from there. So. Yeah, and then they didn't move. Didn't they move to uh, COD for a while, too? A couple of times, actually, yeah. Yeah. For a number yeah. of reasons. So. And then it became always a Denny's is. game, which is, I feel, is the ultimate... <laughs> It's the end for, for a lot of <laughs> always a last stop days. at any I'm sorry. live action role playing. What game. in the nineties did not end? At a Denny's. At a Denny's. Nothing good, that's for damn sure. Everything good. All right. I'm debating whether or not to even strike this from the uh, the podcast. I know, right? I'm not going to. <laughs> uh anyways, we're gonna continue we can, on. We can trim it a little bit. <laughs> we might trim it. We might trim a little bit of the fat. Uh <laughs> But anyways, uh, I'll, I'll go on to you, Ken. Uh, how about you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, yes, I am Ken. I have known Aaron for God, close to 20 years now because you were on the same trip as me when we went to Japan. And that was where we figured out that we had met each other previously, that you knew the Durdens, and that that infamous game that you were referring to was the one where we were playing... I, think it was rifts of some sort where we were all in these giant mecha we were playing heroes unlimited was it yeah. okay yeah were you the one that i drove a freight train into basically i, I don't remember it, it, it was such a lopsided uh <laughs> it was oh it was a hot mess <laughs> it was a beautiful hot mess we had so much fun wait was that the the game where we were all yeah you were the linebacker with no head yeah yeah that yeah, was like, right that was oh, so you much were there? fun Oh, yeah, I was, was in too. all of the games that you've been He was, been in. dude. We've known each other for a lot longer than we all thought we have. Ah, uh, the chaos. The chaos. I know, chaos. right? Uh, <laughs> the chaos. Well, that's why I was asking about the, the Naperville River Walk. Exactly. Because I'm fairly certain we were there at the same time. Because we were there as well. And mm -hmm. I knew pretty much all 136 regulars of the Naperville game at its heyday. I looked a lot different. So did I. <laughs> well, that, I mean... Again, it's it's funny how everything sort of intersects. It does. Kind of, yeah. Have known each other. For yeah, so but uh, these little like clusters of games in specific areas, everybody kind of gravitates to the same place around the same time. You've got a lot of different people uh, playing either different games in the same system, or just availability is limited. You can only go to Chasers so many times before they kick you out for not actually ordering drinks or dancing or whatever. <laughs> and <laughs> you can only raise so much hell on the Naperville River Walk before you get talked to so many times by the police and you have to relocate to Lombard. So, shit happens. There we go. Um, so, for Josh, you're primarily a GM, or I'd say you'd probably be considered a GM in most cases. Uh, how, what, what is kind of your GMing style? What, what's your, your kind of thoughts behind the, the craft? Oh, well, um... I tend to overanalyze uh, different <laughs> situations, uh, way over prepare, and then uh, throw all of it out in the heat of the moment and fly by the seat of my pants. So, so you, a standard so you, GM. You just like to wing it. No prep. <laughs> or just going to no, wing it. I, I actually do quite a bit of prep um, for the, the long term game that I have uh, with Laurie and Ken and some of the others. Um, I have probably a couple hundred pages of notes but when um it's it's a lot of uh generic information you know these are the this is the environment these are the buildings these are the uh different establishments um and just like notes like here is a list of npc names that you could use don't bother with personalities don't bother with what they are these are just names so that you don't have to think of a name on the fly and then when um, they interact with somebody, I will randomly pick a name from the list and I will generate a personality based on what they're looking for and uh, just go from there. 
So you sort of fill in the blanks to what your players need. Yeah, uh, it's it's um, it's it's a fifty fifty between you know over preparedness and having no idea what you're doing. Okay, all right, that's a an interesting way to approach the the games. I always like to ask different GMs, and then Lori, I know you're not a GM, but you're a player primarily, and you're pr- relatively new to the hobby. Um, have you developed any styles to being a player, or have you given any thought to any of that? That's a great question. I'm not really sure how to answer that. Um, yes and no. My main thing that I like to do is shoot things. I like to kill things. So I like the battles. Um, I think that's what draws a lot of new players in. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't really think that I give it much more thought than that. Have you found any of the stories to be engaging? They can be, definitely. Um, but I do like a lot of battle. When it, when it comes to the battles, do you like the battles to be very tactical, or do you want the battles to be more of a uh, an easy way for you to kind of shoot things down and kind of get the win? Probably more tactical. It's nice when there is a challenge, but obviously you don't ever want a challenge to be so so hard that you can't win, right? You, that you have a fighting chance. Uh, and do you like the group play within the battle? Yes. Yeah, I like being able to be cooperative, but as the other people that play with us are relatively new to the game too, we rely heavily on Ken <laughs> <laughs> to guide us. Uh, because we aren't fully I shouldn't speak for them but for myself I'm not fully immersed in it at this point and maybe that is because I'm still relatively new so from the uh I, I know we started or I played a little bit of the Heroes Quest game which is what brought you guys into D&D mm-hmm. um you know Heroes Quest was very simplistic you think you're a ranger in Heroes Quest I'm a ra- just, I'm always a ranger always I'm ranger. really mm-hmm. boring yeah you like you like that long range bow combat twang twang Get you, get you twang twang <laughs> yes yes um, i do do you like the aspect of the way that your character levels up uh and the new abilities that you get to be able to fight in battle yeah i think more so obviously more so now than maybe in the beginning because now i think my character has more access to better things that it can do or that she can do i should say um yeah <laughs> that's interesting no I, I'm, I'm i'm trying to just kind of gauge from you as, as a new player <laughs> is that the dog that is, that is the dog. <laughs> she's doing it on my feet <laughs> oh gross Poor Ruby. She, she's coughing oh she's doing that because we're recording yeah of she, course yeah she, so, might, sorry. She, might, she never does this otherwise but <laughs> yeah i think i've heard her do it like maybe once or twice before yeah only one year though. and a half that's but... all right when, when i recorded with jared we always had cats that would come in and mm-hmm. then you know it, it's always something so. right <laughs> there's always something yep yeah it's background sorry, noise. The, 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 this is the, the unless the, you're the, in an actual studio yeah you're i don't, I don't, I don't actually have that. a studio to right. you know, record it so you know but this is more authentic a very authentic yeah so now you get to have very, cats and all that. It's very slice of life. <laughs> um, and then I guess maybe a final thing for you, Lori, is uh, you know what are you hoping to look forward to as as a player? Like, what are you hoping that you know maybe the hobby brings to you, and you know, that, that you might be looking for in the future? Maybe just becoming more comfortable playing the character, okay. being the character, um, being able to just fully understand the different things there's so much right yeah. like there's so many things to know about what each individual player does there's all this terminology you know what class are you um it would be nice to understand it a little bit better obviously um and then just be able to be more comfortable being the character no, that's all that's all good stuff uh, again i I'm, I'm very interested in eventually you know getting into an episode picking your brain on being that new player and you know what it's like and maybe kind of getting you know your thoughts on some topics that i would consider you know like things that i muse about as like you know a veteran to the games and seeing what your perspectives are on those things as well because yeah you know, i think that a lot of people look at these hobbies and they're like how do i bring that new player in 
and how do I make that new player comfortable enough to eventually, you know, grow into the characters and the, the people they want to be playing the game. Right. I wonder if the reason why it's so much more difficult to kind of become that player for me is just that I started really playing at a much older age, right? Mm. Mm. Maybe if I had uh, been exposed to this type of gaming more when I was a little bit younger, it would be a lot easier to get into the groove of playing. I don't know if that makes sense. No, right. Oh, that makes yeah, sense. absolutely. Definitely. What about... Um... Uh, playing online versus playing in person would you feel more comfortable since i know we did most of the game that we've done uh has been you know one of these online experiences you get that uh that virtual tabletop and you get to have that game that you see but you're not like you're not in a room with the other players interacting with them personally true you don't necessarily have that same sort of like i turn to crag deck and say hey uh Whoever, I'm just making up a yeah. name. Um, it's on my list. And, <laughs> uh, you, you, you're not turning to anybody. You're not looking at anybody. Um, you are just sitting there by yourself in a room. Well, um, I mean, I share that room with you. And yeah. when nobody says anything on the game, you turn and stare at me. Ooh, I can't so, stare at anybody else. It's really weird. I, I mean, that. I think that does change, obviously, the way that the game goes. You know, it, it was better playing in person prior to COVID when everybody was able to get together and that's what we did. Although there are advantages to playing online. It's easier to keep track of things. If I need to look up something, you know, it's all in the, what is that called? The The party list or interface, whatever. I like the maps. Mm -hmm. Good. I spend a lot of time on those. I know you do. (laughs) But... (laughs) But I, I do think that having being able to be with people and interact with them does bring a different element to the game. And maybe that's part of the, the problem, why it's even harder to get more immersed in the game and be comfortable being the person is because it's done online. That makes sense. Yeah, I could see that being that that's the way that you've sort of been introduced into the hobby. Yeah. I mean, not to say that... I was super, you know, into the character when we were playing in person, but we had just started. Mm -hmm. And then because of COVID, because of time, you know, time and schedules and everything, we just went to doing things on the internet. Mm -hmm. Which I think is the way that a lot of groups have sort of gone at this time. Very true. Um, No, that's that's a really good insight. I'm going to just going to go into Ken here. (laughs) We'll, we'll, uh, um, I was going to ask you because you've both you've been GM and player, mm-hmm. and you GM for our group. And I know you GM for them as well. Yep. So, as a GM, what is sort of your philosophy as a GM? Kind of how? What's your style? Uh, it took a while for me to determine actually what my style was because for the longest time, I literally would just like have an idea and kind of fly by the seat of my pants and like just kind of roll with the punches of what the characters were doing. Now. That circumstance is a little bit different when you're in a live action setting because you're micromanaging all the players' actions with your narrator staff, meeting with them very briefly, saying, okay, these are your plot points. Party A is doing this. Party B is doing this. Party C is doing this. These are where those points intersect. And let me know if you hit any speed bumps. We can hash it out in like a few minutes, whatever. Uh, to Lori's point, that's a little bit more jarring for players who haven't been able to accommodate that kind of transition. Uh, as a, I hesitate to use the word experienced gamer, but I play a lot of different types of role playing games, uh, not the least of which uh, live action, tabletop, and mass mogs online. Mass Mogs actually were a very soft transition into uh, coordinating with people by voice over the internet uh, for, Christ, 17 years now? Good God. I've been playing WoW for way too long. (laughs) But that point notwithstanding, it was uh, an easier transition when you go from something that you're akin to, excuse me, not akin, but accustomed to working with people in a live action setting soft transition for a game that everyone's playing that no one's really in control of but everyone's still collaborating on so that was actually one of the uh, things that 
I felt was a little bit easier of a transition or something that I was already used to where it might be a little bit more jarring for Lori whose only prior experience was in person. I don't recall having that same kind of uh, initial reaction to coordinating with people online when we were doing mass mogs, but it wouldn't surprise me if I did. So, uh, but getting, I'm getting kind of off topic, but <laughs> the uh, original question, how do I game or how do I story tell? Uh, currently, I've developed a system where I'll put in together my uh, main plot points, the characters involved, and kind of build everything that I want around that, whether I need to develop maps or uh, create characters. And counter to Josh's, I leave nothing undeveloped, and that is a huge huge drawback sometimes so you're heavy it's a others. monumental time dump sometimes you simply don't have enough time to determine i you remember what jared was talking about with his uh, kitchen staff subplot line yeah, in one of his uh, games we talked about it many times <laughs> <podcast>. it's <laughs> yeah it, it's a thing and i and i do try to be very wary of that because one of the first questions that i try to ask myself when i find myself in that circumstance is What's the likelihood of my players stumbling upon this narrative? How does this affect my main plot? Does it need to be here? And if it doesn't, I just nix it outright and I try to stop thinking about it. And by nixing, I mean I put into another folder and see if I can use it other in other ways. Because if I get into a narrative stretch, I fall down that rabbit hole like Alice and I will not come out for days sometimes. <laughs> Well, so yeah, that's an interesting thing. It is, it's a completely different style than the very improv nature that, that you mm -hmm. get, Josh. So, I mean, uh, you, it, Laura, you, have you, you, you've been a player under both of them as GMs, right? Yes. Okay. Because I, I think Ken ran a, a module, right? Um, I started to run a module. Before that, I actually ran a, a hyper elaborated version of Hero Quest that uh, Josh I was, I was, I was yeah. there for a couple. You were. You had the width. <laughs> yeah, that was in person. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I haven't uh, narrated for you guys uh, over the internet yet. So no, no, but we did do the um, the mines, uh, mines of mines of Moria. No, Philander. For mm -hmm. for for, for, for What's what's that? Uh, oh, full, yeah, the the PH place, the the Philandrin or whatever it is. The base module that everybody says is the best thing to start out with D and D. Yeah, okay. It, it leads into. Uh, I, 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 I remember the story. Mine's a Moria. What was I thinking? God. <laughs> well, you were thinking Lord of the Rings, but you're wrong. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> That's just because Lori's a legless fangirl. So. Uh no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. uh. I, I'm the reason why I was asking that is because you sort of GM'd under the more uh, you know fully constructed world versus a more improvised world. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you, as a newer player, have seen any difference between the two uh, in terms of you know how they play. Well, I mean, obviously they they both have. I'm saying obviously a lot, which I don't <laughs> understand fine. quite why I'm doing that. But they both have different styles, so the storytelling is going to be much different. But in terms of how they get from point A to point B, I'm not looking for that, so I don't right. notice it. No. I, I just was wondering if there's any difference from a, from a new player's perspective. Not that I, I can think of right now. Again, they have different styles, mm -hmm. and that you can pick up, but it's not so much you can tell, like, Ken is really prepared and Josh isn't. It, that doesn't stick out. They mm -hmm. both seem to come to the the game, the story, knowing what they're going to do and doing it. Okay. No, that makes sense. Um, but no, I, I'm excited to have all of you on. I'm excited to bring you in on various different episodes coming up. Uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun to be able to get different experiences, different uh, perspectives, especially from, you know, people who are a little bit, I mean, Jared was also more on the more prepared side. Um, mm -hmm. And I sort of kind of follow in his footsteps, being somebody who has gamed at his table. Mm -hmm. And both of you have very different experiences in terms of GMing. And then yep. you have the experience of being a player, which is going to be great to be able to talk about these subjects with. So I'm really excited to do more, more episodes with you. And that's just yeah. a little teaser for 
with these guys right here. Yeah, thanks for having us. Woo, thank you. Looking forward to it. So anyways, that's going to wrap us up for this week. Uh, again, if you like the podcast or if you want to shout out either of these, any of these wonderful people that I've brought on to the, uh, the podcast, levelupyourgamingpodcast at gmail.com or facebook.com slash levelupyourgaming. Uh, we are also on YouTube, so smash that like button. And uh, go ahead and rate the podcast, review, subscribe, all that good stuff. Recommend it to a friend. And that's going to wrap us up for the week. So for Josh, Lori, and Ken, I'm Aaron. Have a great week, everyone.